to know that God makes a way whenever we cannot see the way. When, he, when we can't see it, I want to encourage someone here today that I'm telling you, you can't see a way, but God knows the way. He's already cleared the path. He's made the way for you. You know, I've heard this saying before that the wheels of God turn slowly, but they turn. And God is always, always, always on time. He is always on time. Sometimes doors close and we think, God, I missed it. I missed it. You missed it. And then God turns around and opens a better door and a better opportunity and a better job than we ever, ever, ever could have imagined. So much better than what we had planned for ourselves. And I always say, God, I am so thankful that though I think I know everything, I do not know everything. And you are way smarter than me. Sometimes I think, Jesus, I already know how this is going to happen. I already know how this is going to work out because... I am just sure that you love me and I just know it's going to all be good and this is how it's going to go. And then no lie, every way I think I have it planned and the way I have it worked out and the way I have it purposed, literally none of it happens. And then I'm like devastated for like a day and then something else happens that better. And then I'm like, Jesus, come on. You always know better. You always know a higher way. He's just higher, church. His ways are higher. They're higher. They're higher than ours. And so I'm telling you today, God has a word for you. He has a word for you today. And if you will lean in, if you will open your ears, open your eyes to see what God has to say today, he's going to speak to you and he's going to give you some direction in some areas of your life that you really need it. You know, sometimes we come to church and we think, Church life is like Instagram. It's like the it's like the highlight reel. We come to church and everyone's on their highlight reel because we're all like, "Hey, praise God! Praise the Lord! I'm so I'm so awesome and God's so awesome and praise God!" And and you come into church sometime and you're thinking like, "I literally dragged my butt here today, and I barely made it. I barely got my kids out the door. We barely got shoes on their feet. You know what I mean? Like you just come in and you're just desperate." And I just want to say, church, that be desperate because you know where God meets you in your desperation. That's where God meets you. Be the woman at the well. Be the woman that's just sitting there, going to give Jesus water. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. I'm about to give you living water and your life will never be the same. For some of you, you walked in this place today and you are desperate. You're out of hope. You don't know where to go or what's next. There's just some things that aren't right. And I'm telling you, Jesus gives living water, living water for your soul today. And I am 100% believing that whatever you need today, church, God knows. And if you're that woman or you're that man that walked in here today so desperate because you need a touch from God today, Lean in. Lean into what God has to say. Lean in. Just close your eyes right now. We're just going to pray over this service. God, God, we need you. We are desperate for you. We're hungry for you. We're thirsty for more of you. And God, I just pray over every person that's here. I pray over every person that is online today that God, you know exactly what we need. You know exactly what they need. That God, it's time for us to go from glory to glory, from level to level. And so God, I just pray over each one of us. God, I thank you that you would open our ears today. You would open our eyes of understanding today that, God, we are going to hear what you want us to hear. We're going to see what you want us to see. That, God, your word is seed in our heart. It bears fruit in our lives. It lights our path. It directs us. It guides us. And so, God, I just thank you that you would anoint your word. God, I thank you for your presence in this place. God, your glory that just rests in this house. God, we are so thankful. And so, God, I just thank you right now that it's going to be an amazing day. I pray for all of our kids over in Kids Church today, all of our babies in our preschool department. God, I just declare today that you are touching their lives. You are speaking to their lives today. And so, God, I thank you for an awesome day. 
an awesome word in Jesus name. Amen. Everyone says amen. Amen. Amen means so be it. So be it. Listen, I want you to turn around, say hi to someone before you sit down. I'm going to welcome our El Salvador team that's here. We're going to pray over them before they head off. Woo, woo. Where's our El Salvador's people? to lead um, a couple of people behind me on our El Salvador mission trip this year. This trip was originally planned in 2019 that we were going to go on during 2020, but because of the pandemic, we pushed it back to 2021. And I am so excited to be able to go support um, Pastor Wally and Judy Cook, who currently live in San Salvador, El Salvador. Um, we are going to help with um, services during the week. We're going to travel to remote villages um, to preach the gospel and pray for the people. We also get a really awesome opportunity to help some kids in an orphanage called Tia Anas. And we also get to help um, students uh, who want to learn English. We're going to assist them throughout the entire week on English phrases, teach them the best words that they need to know. But most importantly, we get to share the gospel to people who may have never heard the name of Jesus before. So our trip is actually gonna take place on June 26th all the way to July 3rd. So during that week, if you could, please partner with us and pray for the team as they're on the trip. And if you wanna support the trip, the team in any way, you can actually go to Push Pay and donate to missions. We will use that to buy uh, gifts for the kids in the orphanage. Um, we are gonna surprise them with a few like little plush toys and lots and lots of candy because I know kids love candy. Um, but this is only some of us. There's still a few others that are not currently on stage with me. They're actually serving currently um, while we have service today. But without further ado, I'm gonna invite Pastor Brandon to come up and pray for the El Salvador team. Yep, come on, Brandon. Why don't you come pray over everybody? Right. And you guys step forward because you're kind of like literally in the dark. Come forward. <laughs> Would y'all stretch your hands this way? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're doing what you asked us to do, Lord, which is go to all the earth preach your gospel, Lord. These people are the ones who said, I'll go. I'll do it. So I thank you, Lord, that you watch over them and everything that they do, Lord. I thank you that when they get there, they will experience favor with an entire country. For all those who come in contact with, we thank you for straight, for, for safe travels, God. We thank you for favor in every area, Lord. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders following these people who believe. Lord, thank you that there will be healings, that there will be things established there that will change an entire nation. You are that good. We thank you for that, Lord, and I thank you that as those who go out of here today, Lord, on your mission for you, Lord, as they focus on building your kingdom and building your house, that their house will not go untaken care of, that you will be about their house, Father, nothing missing and nothing broken. Thank you for your great blessing upon their life. Thank you for new revelation and life-changing power that dwells on the inside of them. In Jesus' name, amen. everybody, I'm Maddie, and we're glad you made it to church today. If this happens to be your first time with us, make sure to text the word welcome to 972-460-9235. It's the easiest way to connect with a team member and learn more about us. Before I move on, I want to take a second and brag on y'all a bit. Last week, we had the Carter Blood Care Bus here for Take Heart Sunday. Because y'all are awesome, we are able to donate 21 units of blood, which has the potential to impact 63 patients. Thank you so much for your generosity and willingness to help save lives in our community. Connection Point is taking place tonight from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the City Kids Auditorium. As a quick refresher, Connection Point is a class where we share the vision of City Point, talk about healthy habits of a believer, and how you can make a difference in the world we live in. Childcare and dinner will be provided, so if you're interested, make sure to sign up today at citypointchurch.com slash events before the end of service.
We're indestructible. Baby, better get that straight. I love this song, Rocky. You know, curious. Where where are we going, Rock? Cool. Hey, man. You don't have to tell me. I get it. We're just driving. I'm kind of hungry, but you know, don't no pressure. Just hey, actually, uh, curious. What are you guys doing this Sunday? You know, I ask because you know it's Father's Day and. You know, City Point, my church, they're, they're doing at the movies for Father's Day. We're going to do a, a, a Rocky theme. So I, I kind of think, Rocky, you're, you're going to like it. Uh, just text Liz and I. We'll save you guys a seat. What do you think, man? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your silence as you're thinking about it. You, you know what? I'll see you there. You've got my number. I'll see you there. This is a great song. Let's just, let's, let, let's just listen to the song. It's awesome. Here at City Point Church, we love helping people take their next step with God. And one of those steps is getting baptized. It's an awesome moment where we get to celebrate together individuals' public decoration of their faith. If you've never been baptized or you'd like to get baptized again, you're in luck. Our next baptism service will take place on Sunday, June 27th during the second service. All you have to do is register at citypointchurch.com slash events and we'll take care of it from there. We'll even provide you a shirt to wear that Sunday. So mark your calendars and invite your friends for a super special Sunday you won't forget. That's all I have for you today. Let's continue the service and get ready for Pastor Eddie as he brings us week two of our June series, Above All Us. of you are like, that's not Pastor Eddie. I know. <laughs> my name is Brandon Marshall. Pastor Eddie is my dear friend. He's the pastor of this church. He and his wife, Julie. It's an honor to be here with you this morning. He asked me to come and share uh, the beginning of our new series called Above All Else. It is such an honor to be here and to, to be with you and to worship with wonderful people. Aren't you glad you came to the house of God this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Eddie, as I mentioned, is a good friend of mine, so it's an honor to stand in his place and bring the word of God to you today. There was a uh, traveling singer who used to travel around and sing at churches and and, uh, sing specials, you know, with the tracks. Y'all remember, any of y'all grew up in church and they would start the track and the person would sing and there's no real music, it's all recorded. So he called this particular pastor and said, hey, I'm going to be in town, can I come this Wednesday night? And the pastor said, sure, come on. So he shows up and there's nobody there but him and the pastor. And he says, did you tell everybody I was coming? And the pastor said, nope, but I'm going to find out who did. (laughs) so those of you who knew I was preaching today and you came anyway thank you so much for being here for those of you who are brand new please come back and give our pastor a chance to minister to you Uh, he has such a wonderful heart for the church so let's start Uh, father thank you for your goodness thank you for the power of your word lord your word can do in a moment what a lifetime of therapy could not accomplish what decades of medicine could not do your word could do in a moment not just a moment in this moment father so we thank you for that thank you lord we raise our expectation expectation and our expectancy to you and to what you have for us today god for your people lord through the power of your word now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that i could ask or imagine above that we could imagine or even think unto you be the glory and the honor forever and ever lord we thank you for your power here dwelling in and through your people in jesus name amen 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 take a bible and turn to the book of proverbs if you would our launching pad for this series will be proverbs chapter four if you don't have a bible you're in luck we have one for you it's right here on the screen if you'll just pay attention we'll go to verse 23 verse 23 says above all else 
Everybody say above all else. Above all else. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. I'll read that again. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Uh, in the 19th century, or actually the, the millennium uh, previous to this, there was what Nobel Pre Peace Prize winners call the most influential person, one of the top 10 most influential people on the entire planet from the year 1000 AD to 1999. Now, most of us in here were born during that period of time, so uh, we got to see the turn of a new millennium, which is like never happens. Uh, and, uh, and unless you're just some kind of miracle, you probably won't see again. Uh, but they said that this man named William Harvey was one of the top 10 most influential people. Uh, the very famous William Harvey. Have you heard of him? Absolutely not. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about my friend. Uh, he was born in uh, 1575 and lived to be six and, uh, and died in 1674. So somewhere in the middle, in the middle of that millennium, uh, he had his influence, and his influence was this. Previous to his discoveries, they thought that the circulatory system revolved around the stomach, that we intake our food, that food was then dissolved and pushed through our blood, which then fed our heart. It was this man who discovered that our heart is the thing that feeds everything else, that everything in our circulatory system and in our cardiovascular system starts and ends with the heart. It's our heart that pumps blood to all of our extremities. It's our heart that brings life into all of our body and pumps the blood through. So everything that's in the blood moves throughout our body based on the heart. It is the absolute biggest piece of our life. It is the thing that has the power to push everything through. That's why when you go home and take a nap today, how many Sunday nap takers are there? Yeah, good for you. Bless you guys. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Sometimes when you lay there too long on one side and then what happens? You, you wake up and you can't, you can't, you got to throw your arm to get it. Why? Because you have cut off the flow. The circulatory system pushes blood through everything and if it's cut off long enough, then that part will eventually die. That's why it's so important to be in the house of God where the blood flows, right? Where do you keep your blood? In the body. Where does Jesus keep his? In the body of Christ. You be around the other believers and the blood flows, right? The heart that he's talking about here when he says, above all else, guard your heart, is not the physical heart. It's not the heart that we, we've come to know with the images and all the, the great things, but it operates very much like that. In fact, it says everything that we do flows out of it. That heart that he's talking about is the very real you, the core of who you are, the very natural, God-created, purpose-driven life that God created on the inside of you. All the other things that we've added to our life, all the other things are wonderful, but the, 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 what flows the most in all of our life flows out of what's really deep down inside. That's what he's referring to. Mahi, I mean Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs. Solomon, the son of David. David, who we're very familiar with. David, the great king of Israel, the shepherd boy who stood in front of a giant and quieted a whole nation. They were looking at this teenager like, what's he going to do? In fact, I got a bone to pick with him. And then the brother went out and threw a rock and killed a giant. And they were like, let's not be so hasty. Maybe he's not, maybe he's not that bad. And he walked right into a kingdom. And the Bible describes him as a man after God's own heart. A man who was always repentant of a man who had the understanding that everything flows out of the heart. In fact, David wrote in Psalms, we can read a couple of those here. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your words where? In my heart that I might not sin against you. He had this understanding that the outward life that I live and the things that I do with my life come from and start from what I put on the inside of me. Psalm 5110 says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He could have asked for anything. He could have said, Lord, change my mind, change my focus, change my position, change any of those things. But he said, no, create in me a clean heart because I know if that is right, then everything else in my life will be right. David went on to have a son who would inherit the kingdom. This son is named Solomon. And Solomon had this encounter with God, which we'll read in 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 7. We'll begin there. On that night, God appeared to Solomon on the night that he took over, on the night that he was, he was, and if you can imagine just for a moment the stress of having to fill the shoes of the greatest king in Israel, the guy that they sang songs about, the, guys that, the guy that was established as the great king of Israel, in fact, the guy that Jesus would eventually come through the bloodline of, the great king of David, and now I have to fill his shoes. This is a very stressful thing because it's one thing to talk about the promise of God in action in our life and the things that we hope to be. It's another thing to actually walk in those things and do it successfully and, and do it without the stress and the burden. You see, we weren't stressed out when God promised it to us. We weren't stressed out when he told us that we could have it. But suddenly when we start to walk in it, we, we, we suddenly feel like it's up to us to perform it. 
that now I have to be this. Now I have to do this. Now I have to be the one who gives my time and effort and all these different things. Listen, it was not about you in the beginning. It's not about you now. It's about his operation in your life. So just rest. Let's go easy. God was with you then. He's with you now. He's going to be with you in the end. The highest form of our faith is just resting in who he is and allowing his operation to happen in our life. So just remove the burden and the stress. It was never about your ability to perform it. It was always about his word in you and his ability to perform his word through your life. Okay, is that good to you? So Solomon here in this moment of anxiety and stress, it says on that night, God appeared to Solomon and said, ask, what do you want from me? What shall I give to you? God didn't put any stipulations on it. He didn't say within this realm of possibility or within. And sometimes I think we go to God and, 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 and we're like, Lord, I, I would love to have this. I'm not going to ask you for that because I know, because you know what? That he can't do it? That he doesn't want you to have it? Any of those things? God didn't put any stipulations. He said, ask and you shall receive. Knock and you shall find. Right? He said, what do you want from me? Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me the king in his place. Now, O oh Lord, let your promise. Now, O oh Lord, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over the people like the dust of the earth in multitude. That's a lot of people. The dust of the earth, that's how many people you have put me in charge of. You have given me a great big assignment, God. You have, you have you put me in a place where I'm responsible for thousands upon thousands and thousands of people. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your, where? Heart. And you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. Oh, isn't that good news? The Bible teaches us that those who lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally. That God will never withhold wisdom from you. In fact, the Bible teaches us that Jesus himself became wisdom for us. So that when we are in him and he is in us, wisdom is automatically ours. Some of you think, well, I'm not a very wise person. Some of, I don't make wise decisions. Listen, tap into the wisdom that God designed for you. Tap into who he is. Wisdom shall be granted to you. And I will give you riches and honor. I will give you what you didn't ask for. Such as none of the kings who had before you, nor will any have after you. I'll make you the richest, wisest king to ever live. Because of what? Because of what was in your heart. This is the same Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs and some of the greatest scriptures that we know, the book of Proverbs, this, this wonderful, wonderful book. I'll read a few of them to you here, a few of my favorites. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. What a wonderful promise. I was going through a period of time in my life where we had just moved to another state. I was young. I was a sophomore in high school, and I had just left all the friends that I made, and we were starting over again, and I got a letter in the mail from one of my friends who I didn't even know was a Christian at the time. I certainly wasn't. I went to church. My dad was a pastor. I wasn't living right. I knew about God, but I didn't know God, and I opened it up, and it was a sweet little note from my friend Brenda written in the bubble letters. Y'all remember how cheerleaders used to write with little hearts over the eyes and all that? And she put this scripture in there and it stuck with me from that day. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on what you think you know. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And I will promise you this, that, I, that when I prayed prayers, I didn't even believe what I was saying. That I loved a God, uh, that, that God loved me and I had, I had no way of loving him back. But I can tell you this, that I, he has directed my path. That he has been the one. When I give the glory to him, I know the next step. These words are very true. Another one I'll read to you. One of my absolute favorites, Proverbs 18, 16 says, a, man gift, a man's gift makes room for him and sets him before great men. I was at a pivotal, pivotal time in my life where I was trying to make a decision. I didn't know which way to go. In fact, the decision that I was getting ready to make made me feel like I was going backwards in my life. And gentlemen, you understand what it feels like as a father, as a husband, as a man to go backwards in life is not appealing. I didn't know exactly what to do, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine who happens to be a pastor in El Paso, Texas. His name is Charles Neiman. He pastors a church of about 30,000 people, a little bitty place over there. <laughs> I was riding in the car with him, and I was, I was confused. I didn't know exactly what my next step would be, and so I asked him. I had some time alone with him. I said, Pastor Charles, what should I do? Do I go right or do I go left? And he said, it's very simple. The Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him and set him before great men. 
And I was like, well, I got to be honest with you, sir. I expected something a little more. I heard that scripture my whole life. That's really not all that profound. And then he said something absolutely profound. He said, Brandon, your gift will make room for you. You don't have to make room for yourself. All the stress that you're putting yourself under, trying to put, push a door open, just be who you were designed to be. Because if there's room for your gift, there'll be room for you because it's your gift that makes room. If there's no room for your gift, then forget it because there won't be any room for you in it. And I came here today to tell you that you are gifted. Discover what that is and push that thing to the forefront. Some of you are frustrated. You keep hitting walls. You don't know exactly what to do. I will, I will tell you what Proverbs says. A man's gift, a person's gift will make room for them and set them before great men. Allow your gift to make that room for you. Quit beating your head up against the wall trying to do it yourself. Just flow with who you are. Just be the best version of you that you can be and allow it to do what it is designed to do. Amen. Amen. Proverbs written by the wise King Solomon. Proverbs 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I heard it described like this, that the fear of the Lord or the reverence of the Lord or the acknowledgement of his presence in our life, the admiration of the Lord is the highway, is the on-ramp to wisdom. He became wisdom for us so that we can have it. He's not withholding wisdom for your, from your life. If you read the entire book of Proverbs, a lot of it is about wisdom and how precious it is and how it is to be desired over silver and gold and all these things. Why? Because if you have it, you can have all the rest of that stuff. A person who operates in wisdom operates at the highest level. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 31.10, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth more than rubies. And all the ladies said amen. I see you out there elbowing your husband. <clears throat> Don't get too excited. The same dude wrote, it's better to dwell on the roof than to live in a house with a hard-headed woman. Same guy. <laughs> Did you say amen? Don't say amen, brother. That was not the time. That was not the time. Same guy. Had a thousand wives. Are you kidding me? A thousand. I have one. Whoo. She asked me one day if, if she died, would I remarry? I said, you think I'd do this again? I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's wonderful. She was first service. She heard the joke. No reason to go tell her. No. <laughs> Don't even bother with it. A thousand. Why? Proverbs 22, 6. We know this one. Raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. How many of you know that's important? Yeah, the promise is that when they're old, they won't depart from it. You brought your kids here today. You raised your kids in the house of God. You taught them the scripture. You did the best you could with them. You raised them up. Don't worry about it. Some of you are here today, and you're frustrated because your children are older now, and you feel like they've gone away. The Bible pr t promises us our children, promises that we, they will come back, that they will not depart from it. Take courage in that today. The same wise gentleman who wrote all these, wrote all these proverbs that we live by, that we love so much, wrote the same thing. Same guy wrote, chapter 4, verse 23, he says, above all else. Above all else? I mean, there's some pretty powerful stuff that this guy understood. This guy was made wise over all kingdoms. He was made wealthy over all people that had lived before him or ever since. In fact, the Bible teaches us that the queen of Sheba came to visit his house. The queen of Sheba, we know that name. Came to visit his house. And she walked through his house and she was amazed at the fine linen. Said, oh, that's nice. I love those curtains. You know how, to, you, know how you do it. Walked through, oh, girl, I love those curtains. I love that. You you, where did you find that rug? I love that rug. I'm going to get me one of those. And she's walking through his house. And the Bible says that when she saw how he went up. In other words, when she saw where he worshipped God, there was no more breath left in her. She said, oh. Herself being very wealthy, herself having access to all wealth, was breathtaking by the place where he worshipped God. That this wise man, of all the things that he built, of all the wonderful things that were in his home and in his life, he placed the most emphasis on where he met God. Isn't that amazing? And this same wise man, the same man who had amassed all this wealth and amazed all these people, said, above all else, guard your heart because the things that I have now in my life Solomon says all came from one moment where God saw what was in my heart 
So above all these other things that you think are so important, above your career, above your family, above all these things, guard your heart. For out of it, the Bible teaches us, flows the issues of life, the springs of life. Different versions say it different ways. This version says that everything we do flows out of our heart. If we have that importance, we have that understanding of the importance of our heart. We have the understanding that this was written by one of the wisest men ever. Then you could say it like this. That if everything that we do flows out of our heart, then wisdom demands that we stand guard at the gate. Wisdom demands that we stand guard at the entrance of our heart. I have a couple of questions I'm going to ask you here today. I'm not going to take a lot of your time, but question number one is this. Where is your focus? Where is your focus? What are you placing focus on in your life? I understand that we have busy schedules. I get it. We go to work. We come home. We feed the kids. We take baths. We do the homework. We put on the bed, and we get the pleasure of doing what? Waking up tomorrow and doing the whole thing over again. I have a three-year-old kid. I'm 42 years old. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> tired right now. That's why I keep moving. If I stand still, I'm going to go to sleep standing right here. I was a lot younger last time we had a three-year-old. I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to renew my strength, Jesus. You're going to like the eagle, Lord, like the eagle. <laughs> We're busy. We got a lot going on. There's so many things in this world that would distract us from the purpose that God has for us and pull our focus away from something this is not a new tactic of the enemy to change our focus and to try and derail us from the purpose and the plan that God has for us to live out. This is not a new plan. The Bible teaches us that we're not unwise to what he's doing. We know what he's doing. We just can't see it because we get so busy that we don't take the time to focus on what's important. He doesn't come directly at us and go, you're never going to make it, right, 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 because you're stronger than that. You stomp that sucker under your feet. You know how to help. So he just comes in subtleties and little things. Like, oh, you missed that. You'll never get that moment back. Look at your children getting older. Have you done everything you're supposed to do with your children? Just starts putting all these doubts in our minds. This is the way he's always operated. In fact, in the beginning, the Bible says that Adam and Eve were in the garden and, the, and everything was good. Everything, life was wonderful. I mean, you're there with your wife. You're the only two people on the planet. You just walk around naked all day eating fruit. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with it? All of a sudden, the serpent shows up. And he starts whispering in the ear. He says, why can't you have that tree? What, that tree? I don't, we don't want that tree. Why don't you want that tree? Because the Lord said if we eat that tree, we'll die. Oh, I don't know if that's what he meant. Subtleties. Subtleties. We've heard things from the Lord, the plan and the purpose. We catch little glimpses of it in our life, and the enemy immediately comes and goes, you didn't hear that the right way. That's not what he meant. And the longer time goes on, we think, well, maybe that's not what he meant. And she keeps listening and keeps listening until eventually says, God didn't say you would die. You're not going to die. Go ahead and eat it. And the Bible says that when she saw the tree, that it was good for food, which it was not, that she ate. And death came to all men. Thanks a lot, Eve. <laughs> and Adam. Adam, standing there, should have killed the snake. My wife ain't going to get a chance to talk to no snake. First of all, snake show up in my house. It's your last day on planet Earth, bro. Some of us learn to live with the little snakes in our house because after all, you know, they are appealing. The little things that come and the little things that start whispering about a life that we could possibly have that was never designed by God, but isn't it appealing? Until eventually our focus changes and we see the fruit, we see the tree that is good when it's not. The enemy's always been after our focus. So where is your focus today? Let's read this scripture. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ Jesus, oh, how many of you know that's true? That you've been raised with Christ Jesus, that your position right now is seated in heavenly places with him. You say, well, that's not my condition. Well, that's okay because your position can overcome your condition if you just understand exactly where you are, that you are seated in a high place of authority with Christ Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Do you not hear what I'm saying? I said you're seated in heavenly places right now with Christ Jesus is your position. If then you were raised with Christ, then seek, th seek those things which are above where he is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Wow. 
How appealing are the new things that have come out, all this new technology. It's like, oh, that's amazing. Look what God gave the man the ability to create. And we get so fascinated by the world around us that we think that this is all there is. When the Bible says, set your mind on things above where he is, where you are with him, keep your eyes focused there because there's so many distractions, so many things. Y'all ever heard of a thing called TikTok? Oh, Lord. I accidentally stumbled upon TikTok one time, and then 12 days later, I was like, where? I haven't even eaten. I discovered TikTok and Facebook was like, hey, we miss you. Come back. Instagram was like, hey, we miss you. My children were like, hey, we miss you. I know. It's getting out of hand. All these things to distract us and suck us in because they're just so wonderful and so, uh, hey, 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 hey. Focus. Where is your focus? How many teachers are in the house? How many of you know you got to keep control of the room sometimes when them little suckers get in the, get, I'm, I'm sorry, them little angels get, at, get, <laughs> What do you do? You put a finger up. You do little cute things. You click the light on and off. And on. Why? Because we got to bring them back to center because there's something that we're trying to give them that's so important for their life that we can't afford for them to just be running around. The Lord has something so wonderful for you that he's placed on the inside of you and he's going, hey, if you just give me five minutes, I'll change the rest of your life. If you just stay with me through this season, I promise the next season will be so wonderful, but we, can, we just get so Oh, I'm so busy. Not today, Lord. You know I got that thing downtown, and I got a da 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 and after all, I got to make my... Hey, if you really realize how blessed you really are, you can just walk around like this all day long, and somebody just come cut your grass. The Lord loves you. <laughs> you think that you got this far because of your amazingness? <laughs> Have mercy. You're designed for a purpose. Focus. Tune in to what he's saying. Set your mind on things above. Quit being distracted by all this. I took a trip... Uh, um, I say it was almost two years ago. Is that in September of 2019, I was invited to a camp, a camp for ministers, a particular type of ministry. And uh, I came and, and I sat through it, and it was wonderful. It opened my eyes to a lot of things. It really confirmed a lot of things that God had for me in that moment. I would say is one of the top five pivotal moments in my entire life. As soon as I left there, from that day forward, my life has been so distracted. The enemy just comes against the plan of God and starts to bring all these different things, all these little subtleties that go, yeah, well, that, you know. Lots of people do that. That's not all that special. That's not all that special. You know, you start saying things like this. And I, I, I got so distracted off the focus of it that it really became a second thought to me when it should have been my main focus. I got more focused on the gift than I did the giver. I got more focused on the things that I needed to, from it and that would help my life from it that I forgot to just give glory to the one who gave it to me in the first place. We have to make it our mission to keep him as the center focus of our life and set our things, our mind on things above and not on things below. This earth at the end of the day is going to pass away. Where are you going to be? You're going to be in eternity, in eternity with him. And I'm telling you, the more start, stuff starts happening around me, I'm kind of like, okay, Jesus, how about today? I'm good with today. This is not our home. We are in this world. We are not of this world. Set your, thing, your mind on things above. How many of you would love to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life? Everybody in here, absolutely. You know that you were designed. When you were put on planet Earth, it was for a specific, that word gets harder and harder, a specific reason. I'll tell you where you find it. The same way you find life, the same way you find everything, you'll find it in him. And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that we consider to be so important that take up so much of our effort and so much of our energy, all those other things that just be added to you. That's the promise. So where is your focus? Are you here this morning and you're distracted? You say, I can't even tune in to God because I can't even find five minutes of peace to myself. You've got to make the time. Whatever it is that's happening in your life is not as important as that. Stand guard over the things that influence your life. Focus. Stand at the gate of your heart and say, I'm not going to be distracted anymore. I can't afford to allow this to distract me anymore. I will live out that purpose. And some of you right now in this room, some of you right now in this room, bound up with so much fear over the things in this world and over the, listen, that was never designed for you to live that way. That's not you. That might be what you're experiencing, but that's not you. You, according to the word of God, have been set free by the blood of Jesus. That fear has no hold over you. That perfect love, which is perfected in him, casts out all fear. All that anxiety and depression and the things that you're dealing with is not you. Say, I don't know how to get out of it. Set your mind on things above. Right. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his wonderful face. Isn't that amazing? Not the way I sang it, just the song. <laughs> just the idea that we can set our focus on him. And all of a sudden, the stress and the burden of the day just melts away. Why? Because we possess the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. The Bible says that he's the burden removing, yoke destroying, anointing power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. In you. The same spirit who in the beginning blew on the earth and created it. The Bible says that in the beginning... God created heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God that lives in you hovered over the face of the waters. It was hovering, ready for action, ready to perform whatever, God, whatever word God said next. And God said, let there be light, and suddenly there was light. Whatever God had said next, well, do you even imagine, and this is maybe just my mind, what if God had said, let there be monkeys. Let there be bananas. Let there be any of these things. They would have been, but it still would have been dark. But he said, let there be light. So that all things, so that the earth could look on the face of the creator. What an amazing thought that the spirit of God was hovering in there in the beginning. And he's been there the entire time. And the Bible says that Jesus said to, this, said to us that it's important for, I, for, for you that I go away because when I leave, then the comforter, then that spirit can come and dwell on the inside of you. And they were all gathered together, the Bible says, in an upper room. And suddenly there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it blew over all of them. And tongues of fire sat upon their heads. Oh, my gosh. What an amazing, amazing moment when the power of God showed up in our life. The same power that lives on the inside of you. The same power that's able to remove those burdens of depression, to remove that anxiety and those anxious thoughts, to remove the burdens of addiction that you've been dealing with and give you life and hope. God has a plan for your life, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Every day of your life is not a surprise to him. David said, you know the inmost parts of me. Every day of my life was written in your book before a single one had passed. And I got to be honest with you, I've had some conversations about God going, you wrote that? <laughs> today? You wrote today in your book? Yeah. Some of those things that we go through, we go, how can that be possible? Hey, he's never left. He's still there. Just turn your eyes on him. Set your focus on things above. Not on the things of this world that don't matter. Where is your focus? And number two, and finally, where is your time? Where is your time? Have you ever looked up and thought, oh my goodness, where did the time go? Where did it go? We feel like we've got this clock ticking in the background all the time, like, oh my goodness, I better hurry up. I guess if I'm going to ever do anything, I better do it now. And suddenly we look up and we got gray in our beards. I got gray in my beard. <laughs> I train people for a living. That's what I do when I was in training. I was training a person and in, in, uh, some people in Orlando. It was a great class, about 75 people. The class was going wonderfully, and I uh, accidentally revealed my age, which I'm 42 years old. I'm pretty proud of that. I got a lot of people in my life that didn't get to be 40 years, 42 years old, so I'm excited that I'm continuing to grow and continuing to mature. And the lady said, oh, my gosh, I thought you were older than me. I said, well, how old are you? She said, 50. I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Now listen, I'm going to tell you all this, but just since it's us and a thousand people online, good morning, welcome. Uh, I never came so close to drop kicking somebody in my whole life. <laughs> never. I had to just walk around and say, well, you look good for 50, honey. I'm like, Lord, just, oh, Lord. <laughs> this clock is continuously ticking in our life and we feel like, man, I should have been further along than I am now. We start to look at all the distractions and the things that have derailed us and all the disappointments that stood in our way. And we think, what a waste. What a waste. Will I ever get that time back? God, who lives outside of time, is going to redeem every wasted moment of your life. 
You think that it was a waste. You think that you just threw it away. You think that it stopped you. You think that it hindered you and all these things. No, 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 no. <laughs> if God has to make you live a thousand years to fulfill the purpose that he's placed in your life, then he is fully able to do it. Can you say amen? amen. God, is, he cares about you. He loves you. He loves and he's excited about the purpose that he created you for. And he is going to, this is for somebody today. God is going to redeem your years. He's going to redeem the time that you thought you gave away, the time that you thought you wasted, the time that you spent in that marriage that you shouldn't have been in, the time that you spent with those people, the time that you, you feel like you just threw away in your life. God is going to redeem everyone. He's going to redeem every moment. Because he's still just as much God as he ever was. And the same God that created you for that purpose is the same God that will see you fulfill it. The Bible teaches us that he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. You are going to see the finish. You're going to see it. You haven't missed it. We think, what about the time? What about the clock? We look up one day and we go, where did all the old people go? And then we look at each other and go, oh, <laughs> oh. We them. <laughs> We're slowly taking their place. The question I have for you, if we understand that everything we do flows out of our heart and that wisdom demands that we stand guard at it, what are you going to do with the time that you have left? What are you going to do with that time? See, my time is precious. My time is spoken for. I, I, I don't know what to do. I get so many people pulling me in different directions. I got this job. I got this career. I got this hobby. I got this. I got that. Hey, listen, make time. Make the time to hear from the voice of the Lord. I'm not going to tell you to get up early because that might not be the answer. I'm not telling you you can just stay up late. I'm not, that might not be the answer. Whatever that answer is to you, make the time to get into the Word of God and start changing the things that influence your life. If you've got to turn the TV off, do it. Spend time in the Word of God. Because when the Word of God influences your life, when He's where your focus is and He's where you're spending your time, suddenly the Bible promises us, in this same Proverbs written by the wise Solomon, promises us that it will add length of days and life, long life it will add to us. Isn't that amazing? How many of you would like to have longer days? Yeah. Maybe some days you're like, I can't wait for this day to be over. But if your days were longer, you could get more done. You could have more fulfillment. You could have, sometimes it just feels like we wake up and then the day's over. It's like, where did the day go? Commit your life to God. Commit your life to focus on him and turn toward his face and focus on the word of God. Make the time. My mentor, God rest his soul, he passed away in 2020. The guy who discovered me, the guy who taught me to do this, the guy who spent his time and life pouring into my life. I heard him from the pulpit one time, and he's one of those guys that, man, when he preached, when, he's, when he spoke from the pulpit, you felt like he was talking directly to you no matter what the subject is. Isn't that the power of the Holy Spirit, though? He translates that to our life exactly what we need. And he stood in front of people right before he passed away, and he said, life is short. So get done what you want to get done and quit fooling around. If that ain't the most Texas preacher you ever heard in your life, <laughs> get done what you want to get done and quit fooling around. No more wasted days. No more wasted days. God has grace for all those things. And he's going to show you the way. Carve out the time. Take the time to make sure that the things that are influencing your life are the things that are going to be good. That the life that comes out of your heart is the life that you want. The Bible teaches us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That we say what's in our heart. Ultimately, it will come out. Out of the abundance, out of the majority of what we put in here is what our mouth speaks. If you want to know what's in someone's heart, hang around them long enough to hear them talk. And not just here at church where they're like, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you doing? Nah, 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 nah. Go ride with them on 75 for about 35 minutes. We're going to figure out real quick. What's in your heart this morning? What have you allowed to influence you? It's not too late to change it. Stand guard. Stand guard with the word of God. The Bible says that no weapon that's formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. Do you know what gives the power for that weapon not to prosper in your life? The fact that you condemn that word before it has a chance to happen in your life. We stand guard over our heart. When someone says you can't make it, you say, I condemn that word. Thank you very much for your concern, but I condemn that. That's not going to be me. 
when something negative comes into our life or we see something fear on the television and say, that'll never be me. That'll never happen to me. We condemn that word in Jesus' name. We cast them down imaginations and bringing unto subjection all things that they set themselves against the knowledge of God, bringing every word to obedience to Jesus Christ. You can't afford, you can't afford to spend your time doing other things. Focus your time on him. Your focus and your time. Stand guard over your heart. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Above all else, above all else, your word teaches us to guard our hearts. So, Father, I thank you for the strength to be able to do it. Lord, the power to be able to break routines that have been negative in our life, to break habits that have been negative. That power rests not in us, and not in our discipline, but in you and in who you are and in your spirit that dwells on the inside of us. Those that are here today, Father, that are bound up and broken, Lord, your anointing is there to change all that. That your anointing could change right now, not just in any moment, but in this moment, your anointing could change that. So I thank you for your love in their life, God, for the revelation of who you are. The one changes, the one thing that changes everything, the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ in our life and the power by his grace to move forward with the life that you designed us to have. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for rest. Thank you for rest, Lord, for those that are weary here today, those that are tired. Your word says, come unto me, all you who are weary and laden down and burdened down, and I will give you rest. Lord, we choose your rest over all things. Above all else, we choose, Lord, to guard our heart for you. And I thank you, Lord, that as we do, that you will fill that heart with good things that the fruit that will flow from our tree from now on will be good fruit. The fruit that you designed, the fruit that you put there, Lord. In Jesus' name. For those of you here this morning and say, oh, that sounds good, Brandon. It all sounds good. And I would love to live out the purpose of God in my life. I would love to, to walk in that direction, but I don't even know him. I don't even know Jesus. I know about him, but I don't have a relationship with him. And I want to start one today. If that's you, do not be ashamed. We're going to pray a prayer together that's going to change the rest of your life. If you'll just let me know I'm praying for you, just raise your hand quickly so I can see it. Who in this room would say, I, I need a new life, and I know that it only comes from him. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. Everybody say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize today that I need a Savior, and I choose you, the one and only, who gave it all for me. I believe you died for me. I believe you were buried. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. I choose your life to come into mine. And I give my life to you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. Can we give those a hand who did that? To the, oh, what an amazing day. Amazing day to be in the house of God. Would you stand up on your feet with me? Listen to what I'm telling you. Your life is going to be different from this moment forward. This moment forward, I pray that you change your focus. I pray that the Lord give you new things to see in your life. This gives you new vision for life, new glimpses of where he has for you. And the power to be able to perform it rests in him. Don't be stressed about that. Be stress-free. Relax. It's all going to be good. Before we go, I want to receive our offering this morning. The Bible teaches us that out of the treasure of our heart, that, that where our treasure is, our heart will be also. Did you know that there are things that I don't give to because I don't want my heart to be there? Because that's what the scripture says, that where I put my treasure, that's where my heart will be. I give to things that I want my heart to be associated with. How many of you want your house, heart to be associated with this house? All right. Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the best of all that you have. The first fruit, the Bible teaches us, of everything that we have, it all belongs to him. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. There are many ways to give to City Point. There's a card in the back of your seat that will help you. Uh, you can give by mail, which is odd because you're here. Uh, you can give, uh, if you're not here and you're online, you can give by mail. Uh, you can give in person, which is more suiting for who, who you are today. Uh, there's envelopes in the back of your seat. You can just uh, put it in there, and there's some boxes in the back. Uh, you can text City Point to 77977, or you can scan this code for some directions. So. Thank you for your faithfulness to this house. How many of you glad you came to the house this morning? Yeah, let's pray over the offering. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for blessing your people and everything that they do, Lord. Thank you for blessing this offering. You watch over it. Father, thank you that you make sure that we always have more than enough, that your word declares that our cup will run over, that we will overflow with more than enough of everything that we need because you're not a God of little. You're a God of a lot. You're a God of way too much. You're a God of abundance, Father. You, 
have designed our, us to live that life of abundance, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.